Happening now, scrutiny over to the National Comedy Center's decision to cease hosting a Board of Elections polling place continues to mount. Plus, Jamestown's mayor testing positive for COVID-19. Oh, those clouds are around once again today and some bitter cold air on the way for the weekend and next week. We'll tell you about it next. The news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sundquist has tested positive for COVID-19. The mayor confirmed the news to the media this morning in a statement. The local leader says he woke up with a fever and cough yesterday, prompting him to get tested. He says he'll remain in isolation until his doctor says it's safe to return to work in person. In the meantime, he'll continue to work remotely. His symptoms, the mayor says, do remain mild. Sunquist says he and his staff have taken COVID-19 very seriously and followed guidelines like social distancing and wearing face coverings. Now we've reached out to the mayor to see if he'd be available for an uh, interview via Zoom. And we're going to reach out to his secretary to try to schedule something for later on in the week. Well, it's been more than a month since the United Kingdom identified a new, more contagious coronavirus variant. And now there are multiple variants scientists are keeping an eye on. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says at least 32 states are reporting cases of them, with more than 407 cases and counting so far. So what does that mean for us? Britt Conway speaks to experts with some answers to questions that we might have. By now, variant is a word you've heard over and over again. Variants remain a great concern and we continue to detect them in the United States. So let's answer a few questions you might have. First, what is it about these variants that has medical experts most worried? The more infection there is in a community, in a country, the likelihood of almost the certainty that there will be variants and the virus's goal is to survive. So it will be the strongest variants that will eventually survive. The variants that have been identified recently seem to spread more easily and there's concern they could become more dominant in the U.S. by the spring. So what about the vaccine's effectiveness against the new variants? Even though there is a diminished protection against the variants, there's enough protection to prevent you from getting serious disease, including hospitalization and deaths. But what if I can't get a vaccine right now? First, wear a mask, stay six feet apart. Second, please avoid crowds and poorly ventilated areas. Third, now is not the time to travel. How will all of that make a difference? There is less virus spreading and the conditions that produce variants are decreased. So public health measures and getting people vaccinated could prevent future variants too? Viruses cannot mutate if they don't replicate. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but it's going to be up to us to step to the plate. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Britt, thank you. The CDC has been ramping up its process to identify additional cases of the variants, but even the CDC director admits it's not yet at a level it should be. Well, the latest scam has to do with COVID-19 vaccination cards. The Better Business Bureau is warning people not to share them online. Vaccination cards have personal information on them, like your full name, your birthday, and where you got your vaccine. But it's not just personal info scammers could be after. They could use your real card to make a phony one. Scammers have been caught selling fake vaccine cards online in Great Britain. The BBB warns that it's only a matter of time before that starts in the United States. If you want to share the moment online, the group suggests taking a photo of your vaccine sticker or take a selfie at the clinic. Well, back here at home, scrutiny over the National Comedy Center's decision to cease hosting a Board of Elections polling place continues to mount. The Jamestown City Council furthered their discussion during a work session meeting last night. Multiple council members voiced their displeasure on the move, which calls for the Chautauqua County Board of Election to look elsewhere for the city ward's third voting site. 
City Councilman at Large Jeff Russell was one of the outspoken members of the issue, saying that the National Comedy Center is doing a disservice to the city of Jamestown and in turn its taxpayers. I say this to the people that run the Comedy Center. If you want to be successful, then you need to be good stewards to the citizens of Jamestown. And by kicking this polling station out of there, for whatever reason you're doing it, you are not being good stewards of this city. There's taxpayers of this city that have poured money into that building prior to you taking it over. And now you're telling those people that they're not good enough to be to come to that building and be able to utilize that rotunda, which legal language says they have the right to do so. City Council President Tony Dole says there are other options that the Board of Elections could look at, saying those include the Lucy Ball Little Theater and the James Prendergast Library. The Comedy Center, in a statement to us overnight, explained they are, quote, dismayed by the lengthy discussion during the Monday City Council work session because the Board of Elections says the center's liquor license prohibits a voting site from being held there. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we get a check of uh, some local news headlines. And we'd love to interact with you, so drop us uh, your name down in the comments. Let us know who's watching and uh, what you think about these stories and more. Great to see Tammy. Good to see Marty, Ruth, Lori, Kathy, Alicia, Cindy, Teresa, Joseph, and Diane. Good afternoon to all of you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Well, now let's get a check of our first defense weather forecast. That's where we find Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. Hey, Dakota. Happy Tuesday, Justin. And boy, second day of February. And yeah, it's going to be feeling like February around here as we get into next week. But hey, live look over uh, the uh, Chautauqua Institution Plaza just shows you the snowfall accumulation there. 22 degrees right now uh, in uh, Chautauqua right now. And the radar shows you we have a few snow showers. And again, this is the same thing that we threw out on uh, social media yesterday. And of course, we talked about yesterday how the snow is moving east to west. Usually our weather flows west to east, but this is all because we're wrapped up in the flow around that big nor'easter that's occurring. So we're going to see the influx of more snow showers as we go through the day today, but the snow should remain on the most part on the lighter side. 21 as of right now uh, here in town, 22 Mayville, 22 Quarry, also in Fredonia, 24 Dunkirk, 20 in Randolph. So temperatures not too far apart. This is below average. And we're going to be staying there. 29 was the high yesterday. We started the day at 16, 59, and 23 below zero. Record highs and lows. So uh, through the afternoon, scattered snow showers develop west, basically east to west today. Uh, the uh, overall accumulations of dusting on the lowest elevations, upwards of maybe three inches on the highest hills. A cold and breezy day, 22 to 30. But look at this wind that is going to keep a wind chill factor in place through the day and into tomorrow. Now the snow cuts out for tomorrow. We could see some sunshine and then... Oh, big Arctic air comes in for the weekend. We'll talk about it in a few, Justin. All right, Dakota, going to want to bundle up. Thank you. Well, a study investigating the feasibility of expanding high-speed Internet across New York State has hit a roadblock. Yesterday, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo used what's called the pocket veto to halt the measure, part of the Comprehensive Broadband Connectivity Act, which was proposed by local state Senator George Borrello. Well, Borrello says he's incredibly disappointed by the move, saying the study would have helped pinpoint areas truly in need. In Cuomo's State of the State address earlier this year, the governor touted that 98% of the state now has reliable access to the Internet, something Borrello disputes. I believe it's political. You know, the governor, even in his most recent State of the State, continues to, uh, you know, to, to reference this 98% of New York has uh, broadband connectivity, which is just not true. It's been disproven uh, by a variety of community-based organizations and local governments. Um, and there's a, co a company called Common Sense Media uh, that says that 27% of all students in New York State are, are without broadband coverage. That's more than one in four. 
Last month, the senator joined other lawmakers in releasing a plan to expand broadband access through the region by tapping into a 115-mile fiber optic line, which runs from Whitesville in Allegheny County to Jamestown here in Chautauqua County. Well, throughout the pandemic, students, teachers, and parents have had to adapt to a new normal for learning, whether it's online, in class, or through hybrid instruction. And with districts across the state using those different methods, some say it's been anything but standard. As New York State Capitol correspondent Karina Capabianca shows us who would be impacted the most. The New York State Education Department has drafted federal waiver requests for student testing requirements and accountability this spring. New York State United Teachers says the move would benefit students given the varying schooling experiences they've had this year. It wouldn't be fair or equitable to use one standardized test to see and measure how much these students know and are able to do. The waivers would impact high school and third through eighth grade testing requirements. While some may argue that state assessments are necessary to make Make sure students are ready for the next grade, DeBrango doesn't believe they would provide reliable data this year. We know that our teachers can work in concert with the teachers that are a grade below them and a grade above them to really create assessments that will allow them to have accurate, valid data to see where the students are and where they need to go the following year. If New York received the waivers from the United States Department of Education, there would be no loss of federal funding. The state is really um, looking at two waivers. One is to waive the actual assessments themselves, and then the second is um, on accountability and having any kind of um, punishment or any kind of identification of a school in need based off of this year's data. NYSED is accepting public comments on the drafted waiver request through Friday. In Albany, Karina Capabianca. Karina, thank you. To give your comment, you can visit their website. It's NYSED.gov. Well, coming up next, will there be winter or spring? We hear the latest prediction on this Groundhog Day. Dakota does not trust the groundhog, but first, the latest in a snowmobile crash that sent two youngsters to the hospital in Cattaraugus County. Stay with us as W1Y News Now continues on this Tuesday afternoon. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. Honest John says what you're looking for. When you want it good, we're gonna give you lots more. From freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has what you're looking for. And now two great locations, East 2nd Street and Fairmount Avenue. Order takeout or delivery today online at honestjohns.pizza. You're going to get it good at Honest John's. is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. And welcome back to WNY News Now. Two juveniles were hurt following a snowmobile crash in Cattaraugus County last week. The county sheriff's office says the crash happened over a bed of water off of Route 241 in the town of Conowango last Tuesday. In total, four juveniles were able to get out of the water and into a nearby residence. Two of the four were treated for injuries sustained on scene. 
The other two were hospitalized, with one taken to Oshai Children's Hospital in Buffalo and the other to UPMC Chautauqua Hospital in Jamestown. No charges were filed as a result of the accident. Well, the city of Rochester has suspended police officers seen in body camera video spraying a chemical irritant in the face of a distraught and handcuffed nine-year-old girl. The city did not specify how many officers were suspended. The suspensions will last at least until an internal investigation is completed. The action was announced as community outrage swelled following the release of footage Sunday showing officers restraining and scolding the girl who was screaming for her father. At one point, an officer was heard telling her to stop acting like a child, to which she cried, I am a child. Police say officers were responding to a report of family trouble on Friday. The New York Attorney General, Letitia James, says her office is looking into what happened, calling the incident deeply disturbing and wholly unacceptable. Well, President Joe Biden spent part of Monday meeting with Republicans to negotiate a bipartisan deal on COVID relief. As Jeremy Diamond reports, the two sides are still billions of dollars apart, which could force Democrat lawmakers to act without the Republicans. Two hours in the Oval Office, President Biden and 10 Republican senators hashing out their differences over the next round of coronavirus relief. Until I come back in the Senate. Republicans pushing their plan, aiming to scale down Biden's $1.9 trillion package to $618 billion, trimming Biden's $1,400 direct stimulus checks to $1,000, lowering the president's unemployment payments from $400 until September to $300 through June, slashing Biden's $350 billion ask for state and local aid, and eliminating the $15 minimum wage increase from the plan. And while there were some broad areas of agreement in that meeting, like the need for relief for small businesses, the president and vice president specifically reiterated uh, that he will settle for nothing less than what is needed to urgently meet the need for the American people. Leaving the White House, the Republicans calling the discussion useful. It was a very good exchange of views. I wouldn't say that we came together on a package tonight. No one expected that in a two-hour meeting. Other Republicans agreeing with their colleagues on the need to slash the price tag. We do have to be fiscally responsible, but also provide relief to those that need it the most. What we don't want to see is a bailout of bad behavior from previous years. But congressional Democrats are quickly moving to pass coronavirus relief without Republican support. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer beginning procedures to pass the stimulus bill using reconciliation, allowing the Senate to pass the bill with a simple majority. It makes no sense to pinch pennies when so many Americans are struggling. The risk of doing too little is far greater than the risk of doing too much. The White House says the president is on board if it comes to that. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki writing in a statement that Biden reiterated that while he's hopeful that the rescue plan can pass with bipartisan support, a reconciliation package is a path to achieve that end. I think that's why we had the Republicans in here today, because we don't want to wait. The truth is families can't afford to wait. There's no uh, rule that Republicans cannot join us in helping the American people in the path that we're choosing. Again, Jeremy Diamond reporting the White House has reiterated Biden's stance to act boldly and urgently. That strong language appears to be setting the stage for that reconciliation process. Well, Punxsutawney Phil has spoken and it's official, according to him, six more weeks of winter. The Pennsylvania groundhog emerged at Gobbler's Knob this morning to see his shadow. The first Punxsutawney Groundhog celebration was recorded back in 1886. That's according to the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club's website. Well, unlike previous years, only 16 members of the Groundhog Club were present to see Phil make his forecast because of the pandemic. Statistically, Phil has only been right about 50% of the time in the last 10 years. 
this year. He might not be far off, though. More than 40 million people are under winter weather alerts from Georgia to Maine, and another coast-to-coast -coast storm is expected a bit later this week. However, not every road is in agreement. Dunkirk Dave forecasting an early spring during his COVID-friendly celebration this morning. Well, let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. I know Dakota is shaking his head because I think every year we talk about this, Dakota, the accuracy mm -hmm. of a groundhog, not very good. Yes, I, <laughs> you know, I am speechless. The only thing I have is a graphic. Let's take a look at it. And we threw this graphic together because I think this just tells it to you right here. Punxsutawney Phil's accuracy since the eight since the 1800s and how old is this groundhog by the way apparently punxatani phil's been doing this since the 1800s so that makes it's him makes him like what 300 years old yeah. or something like he's that. about as old as me so 40 percent <laughs> accuracy for 200 and some years a meteorologist human our accuracy in this science is 80 percent on a seven day forecast but what about that 10 day don't even go 2.1 inches in Kennedy right now. That's how much snowfall we had as of last night. I'm just moving on. Two inches in Kenner August, also in Little Valley, 1.7 in Gary, one and a half in Faulkner, Jamestown, 1.3 in Silver Creek at one inch. And we're going to have a little bit more snow to go through as that big nor'easter, of course, as uh, you know, as uh, Jay talked about, churns across the uh, northeast. We're at 21 right now. Look at this healthy north wind of 13. Oh, that's what it feels like. Eight degrees outside and six mile visibility. Have a little bit of fog with some of that uh, snow that's coming down. So we do have winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories up and down the east coast here. And uh, this is for that big storm system that's riding along the east coast. Let's show it to you. There it is. You can see that spin right here by New York City. That is low pressure. And that is why the precipitation today is moving in the odd direction. It's moving east to west because a low pressure spins counterclockwise. So we're wrapped up in the flow around that low. And that is ultimately going to continue as the storm system kicks off to the northeast coast. You can see we have nothing showing up right now locally, but that will be changing. Let's take you through a future scan. You can see how it brings in the influx of the snow from from east to west today and uh, it's not going to be snowing all day and in every spot today but you will see a few snow showers from time to time today tonight and then early tomorrow morning uh the best chance for at least a few snow showers and then it tapers off for the afternoon as the low kicks on out of here so additional snowfall accumulations all the way through tomorrow again I, again it's all based on location 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 if you're further to the east you're going to get more snow further to the west less so around here we're looking at an average half an inch to one inch but do understand especially in the hills of the southern tier you could see upwards of two to three inches the hills often see the most and when you work out here further to the east here this pink strip here this pink and purple strip again that's where you could see upwards of eight nine possibly even ten inches of snow so the inland forecast for today yeah we're likely going to stay down into the upper 20 snow showers at times through the day from west from east to west today, going the opposite direction. But cold, this north wind is gonna make it feel so much colder. Next seven days of your life, not brought to you by the groundhog, but they are brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny. 27 degrees tomorrow. The sun may peak out at times tomorrow. More sunshine on Thursday though. 36 and falling on Friday. And look at the temperatures go all the way downhill on Sunday and Monday. Yeah, 12 as a high on Monday, yikes. We'll take a break, be right back. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny, smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. 
when you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Well, finally here today, Wall Street, they're gearing up for what could be another week of rocky trading, fueled by small investors on Reddit, driving up the price of the GameStop stock. In today's Consumer Watch, Mady Gaither breaks down what this saga is all about. The so-called Reddit rebellion. While it's too soon to know how it will change the future of investing, experts are sure Wall Street will never be the same. I want to make more money, and I feel confident it's going up. Here are three things we do know about the GameStop saga. Number one, it's a David versus Goliath story. In this case, it's a band of amateur day traders versus Wall Street pros known as short sellers. Number two, here's how it blew up. The popular Reddit message board called Wall Street Bets noticed GameStop was heavily shorted by hedge funds. And then an army of Reddit investors rushed to buy shares in high numbers, driving up the price. They're placing bets on a market in a way that they're actually affecting the odds of the outcome. One year ago, a single GameStop share cost about $4. It's now about $150. Short sellers were forced to buy shares to cover their losing bids, which sent the price of shares soaring even higher. Number three, the Robin Hood backlash on Thursday. Robin Hood, the free trading app, suspended trading of GameStop and other red-hot stock shares, citing extreme volatility. We're in a historic situation where there's a lot of activity and a lot of buying concentrated in a relatively small number of symbols. But some accused the app of caving to pressure from powerful institutions on Wall Street. The next day, Robinhood resumed limited buys on the stocks. Most experts say GameStop isn't able to support such sky-high prices, and at some point, the bubble will burst. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy. Thank you. The Reddit crowd also drove up huge jumps in AMC, BlackBerry, Macy's, and other stocks that were heavily shorted. Meanwhile, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the agency that regulates Wall Street, says it will closely review actions by trading platforms to restrict those transactions. Very interesting, nevertheless. In Dakota, we're both uh, gamers, so when I saw this story Little. last week, I thought to myself, I'm like, well, this is good, right, for GameStop, but right. a lot of people now saying maybe not so much because what goes up must also come back yeah. down. And it's like, you know, GameStop, who in the world is investing in BlackBerry? They haven't right. been relevant in a right. decade. What is a BlackBerry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I know. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. It used to be a question. Everybody had a BlackBerry in their pocket. Every businessman, every news anchor had, had a BlackBerry, Blackberry in their pocket. But uh, now we've all got iPhones God. and Androids in our pockets. You, but, go you ahead. know, it's like, who? It, why would you invest in BlackBerry? The company is not relevant. They should just go out of business because they're not even relevant anymore. Well, let's not, you know, crap all over BlackBerry. But uh, favorite BlackBerry moment. This is Or Macy's or any of the... S like, this is Squirrelin right here. Have you ever watched the show The Newsroom on HBO? No. It's now on Amazon Prime if you have it, check it out. Will McAvoy, uh, main character famous actor who plays well uh, there's a scene where he's the, they can see his blackberry on the desk and here we're pretty lax about 
what our rules are, but his producer didn't like it, so he threw the phone at the camera mm -hmm. <laughs> two minutes before they went on the air. Favorite scene ever. Poor Blackberry. Let us know what you think about that more in the comments down below. I guess we'll see what happens this week. Uh, it is very much a David and Goliath situation, and, and a lot of times a lot of well, people like to side with the little guy, so... Well, you see, for me, I have been on the fence of investing. Yeah. But it's like, to me, I don't understand any of this. Right. And it's just and it like is this confusing. whole thing, it's got me to the point where I just don't even want to right. even attempt it. It's why I keep anymore. my money under the mattress. <laughs> That's <laughs> Justin Gould, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now you know where to find his money. I'll be here all week. It's not really under the... I wish I had a lot of money under the mattress. What are you, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we'll leave you with this live look over downtown Jamestown. We're back tomorrow with a look at more local news that matters to you. We hope you can join us then live right here at noon.